Even though I have collected quite a lot of pedals that John used, I have never actually gotten the Line 6 FM4 famously used in that throw away your television solo. And the reason for that is that I looked up demos of that pedal and I never really got inspired on how I could use that uh, pedal in my own creative process. And you know, to me it isn't super resourceful to buy one pedal just to be able to recreate one sound effect from one song, you know. So yeah, but on the other hand I got really inspired by John's Mogrofo collection and how we used them. And uh, <laughs> I actually bought the whole collection, even the ones that John didn't use himself. Um, and uh, the great thing with the Mogul Progress is that they give you a great foundation to create a lot of different sound effects, including what you heard there in the beginning, the throw away your television obi setting on the FM4 sound effect. And uh, not only can you create all the different sounds, but you really have to understand how the effect works on a very fundamental level in order to be able to use the focus so they have a bit of a learning curve but once you're past that you really have deep in your understanding on you know how sound effect works in general you know so that's really really helpful and that brings me to the goal of this video and that is not just to show you the settings to get that sound effect but most importantly i want you to understand how that effect works and the fuggers are a great platform to show you that so that is what i will do now and hopefully it will be really interesting and you can learn a lot from it and hopefully after you understand how the effect works you can uh, perhaps uh, found other ways to recreate that sound effect other than using the FM4 or the Mugfogers. Perhaps you can find other pedals or maybe plugins on the computer to do it or yeah, it would be really interesting if you uh, could comment ways that you found to recreate that sound effect in your way. Uh, but yeah, what I will do now is um, film the pedals and explain uh, more in depth how it works. I will also illustrate what happens when you turn each knob by having an EQ on the computer just so you get the really fundamental understanding of what's happening. And then I will connect the pedals to the amp so you can hear what happens when you tweak the knobs in real time now. So yeah, let's take a deeper look at the pedals. Right, so here we have our low pass filter, which is a key ingredient to get this effect. But before we jump into this one, let's start from the very basic by looking at this EQ here. So, you know, a sound is typically described as a vibration in the air. So a sine wave going up and down uh, and up and down one time is a one complete cycle. And if that happens during one second, you have one hertz and we can typically uh, hear between 20 and 20,000 hertz, as you can see here in this EQ here on the X axis. And uh, so here we have lower frequencies uh, and here we have higher frequencies, higher pitch sounds and here lower pitch sounds. And uh, what you see here uh, is my voice and uh, when they are higher on the Y axis here, they are higher in decibels in volume. So my lower frequencies seem to be uh, higher here in volume while the higher frequencies here seem to be lower in volume. So yeah, that is the basic understanding. And now I think we can switch to a uh, EQ without my voice so it doesn't become so <laughs> messy. But uh, yeah, what the EQ allows us to do is to boost or reduce uh, the gain of uh, certain frequencies. And uh, now we get to how the low pass filter works because uh, that filter looks something like this. So here you can see that uh, the low frequencies can pass through while the higher frequencies get muted. Okay, so now when you have that basic understanding, we can start to uh, look at the low pass filter. So the most important knob here is the cutoff knob. And um, you know, if you move this knob, it corresponds to moving the EQ uh, like this, you know. So for instance, if I set it here at uh, about uh, 1K, then that would mean setting it up to somewhere like this, you know, where it starts to uh, mute the ones at 1K. And uh, this switch here uh, determines the slope. So you see that uh, when we reach 1K, it doesn't mean that the frequencies get completely muted, but they reduce in volume uh, step by step, you know, and then eventually they get completely muted. So with a two pole, uh, then it would look something like you see here. And with a four pole, it would 
uh, in comparison look more like this. So with the four pole we have a more steeper slope. So uh, yeah, and then the way our EQ is set up now, uh, when it comes to resonance, it would be set like this at zero. So if I turn this up, then we start to get this peak right before the downward slope happens. And the fun thing is if you go past eight, <laughs> after eight, uh, it starts to actually self resonate. So it pretty much means that this goes into infinity. <laughs> and then you can move this cutoff knob, which means that this would be moved like this and you actually have an instrument instead of a <laughs> effect pedal. I can demo that later. And for the throwaway or television effect, I find that uh, it works to have it somewhat like this. Uh, so, you know, yeah, maybe six, seven or something like that. Uh, so, so it doesn't start to self resonate. So yeah, this is the filter section, the most important section, but this section uh, here we have the mix knob should be quite obvious, you know, wet and dry. If you have it all the way down, it uh, means that the effect is pretty much uh, turned off. And uh, here it is 100% uh, wet, you know, so I have it uh, mostly the wet signal, but yeah, you can explore with that as much as you like. And the envelope is turned off for this effect. And what it means shortly uh, is that if we increase the amount here to turn it off, it means that uh, this uh, knob here will move up and open up when you strum hard and then it will go back when you stop strumming you know and um, this smooth and fast uh, switch determines how fast it should react the cutoff filter to your playing but uh, for this effect we turn this at zero so we can move on i guess so yeah now we understand very well uh, how the lopez filter works and if you take a look at our eq uh, what we need to do here in order to get that OBY effect is to move this around but we need to move this around like this and we need two things first of all it needs to be moved around randomly not in a pattern like in a sine wave or something like this you know but maybe here then just move here and then here so you know very randomly but what we also need is that there need to be no gradual change, but it actually need to move, for example, from this point to this point immediately without any gradual change to, in order to get these effects. And uh, how do we achieve this? Well, we could hire someone to just move this knob, but uh, it would be quite hard because if a human does it, you always get these <laughs> gradual changes and it would be quite inconvenient to <laughs> have someone do that. So a better solution is to use this thing here, the CP251 control processor. And uh, this may look super complicated, but it consists of several sections, but we mostly need to focus on this section here, the sample and hold section. So what we need to do with this is to send random voltages, because voltages is what will move this knob around for us and we need to control at which speed we send these random voltages. And the way we do this is that we use the sample and hold section. So first of all, we need to generate these random voltages and we do so with this noise source here. So if I connect this here and if I connect this and to directly to my sound card, what I get is this. So yeah, complete noise. So we connect that to the input of our sample and hold section. But as this arrow indicate here, uh, if nothing is connected to this, then by default, the noise section is connected to the input section of the sample and hold uh, section. So now we send random voltages to the sample and hold, but now we need to figure out a way to actually choose, or in other words, sample one voltage and also figure out for how long do we hold that until we sample or choose another voltage that is randomly generated. And that is where the trig here comes in. And uh, for that we want to use the low frequency oscillator that we got here uh, and connect it to the trig here. Uh, but again by default if nothing is connected to the trig input of the sample and hold then this connection is made automatically, as you can see here. But uh, what exactly is that LFO? Well, it works like this. So, you know, here we have time. 
and uh, uh, when we move forward in time we are at a certain level and then we s and we stay there until we immediately changes to the other end and then we stay there for a while and then we immediately go back and then we stay there for a while and then we immediately go uh, up again and uh, yeah so it moves up and down like this and we control the speed with this knob like this so you, you can see how the light changes and um, it changes gradually but uh, when we use this wave it would make more sense if this were either completely on or completely off but yeah this gives you a general idea of the speed and uh, if you relate this to our sample and hold then you can view it like this so uh, when we reach this place and go uh, up here and then we pass this threshold which I had drawn here in the middle and when we pass the threshold that is when we choose uh, a voltage that is sent to us one of the random voltages and then we hold that random voltage so for instance here we maybe have uh, 1.0 uh, here and then we send that to this knob here and it moves and then we hold that until uh, we pass the threshold again and then here we maybe get another voltage that is 0 0.2 and that means that the knob would move a little bit like that so it's always frustrating to watch through your own completed video and notice an error and the error here is that the 0 0.2 should uh, be up here instead of down there because you actually only sample a new voltage uh, on the way up of the threshold and I actually noticed this when I did uh, the uh, demonstration where the uh, pedals are connected to the amp and you can actually notice this in the video by yourself so yeah that's just a small question there so let's continue the video perhaps and then we hold that voltage until we pass the threshold again and then we get a new uh, voltage and this knob moves and so on so if we take a look at our EQ here what that means is that each time we pass that threshold we immediately shift from one place to another like that yeah and uh, all this gets sent out to the out one here and by the way out two is uh, a modified one where you get gradual changes through a low pass filter that is built in in the CP251 but we don't <laughs> need to worry about that so this is the unmodified version and then we can control this to this uh, cutoff knob here via this input here and that is how we generate that effect that sample and hold effect and yeah now I thought we could uh, connect these two pedals to the uh, amplifiers and then you can see what happens when you turn the knobs in real time. Right, so now I have the low pass filter here connected with the other pedals to the Silver Jubilee. Uh, and I should mention that now I'm only using the Silver Jubilee while in the intro I used both amps in stereo. And the reason for this is that I can only use two microphones uh, at once. But anyway, this is the sound without any pedals uh, activated. And delay. Micro amp. And then the phaser, and by the way, these settings are by no means <laughs> perfect or exactly like John's. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah. And now we have finally the Lopez filter. And I think we can start without the sample and hold effect. And the first thing I want to show is the resonance. So, like I said before, if we go beyond 8, it will start to self oscillate, meaning that we will hear the frequency at which the cutoff. Uh, knob is set at so for example and if we move that cutoff knob uh, we will change the frequency so it becomes an instrument like I said so yeah this is actually a great way to uh, show how the sample and hold effect works so if we set our LFO here uh, at a very slow speed you can very clearly notice how this knob moves well not physically moves but um, you can really clearly notice how this knob receives random voltages so yeah let's illustrate that and then we 
we can change the speed. <laughs> and uh, you can also notice that uh, if we change the cutoff knob now, we will change uh, the range at which we get these random frequencies. So. Right, so now I think we're done with the crazy part and now we can actually show the actual effects. So, you know, with settings somewhat like this, we pretty much get the effect, you know, so. Like that. And one interesting thing to show now is what happens if we have no resonance, then it sounds like this. So yeah, you can notice that something very important get lost there, so we want it somewhere around here. And you can also notice that it's quite crucial where we set the cutoff knob at, because if we set it too low, <laughs> it will sound like this. <laughs> and too high, we will get pretty much no effect at all, so... Because all the frequencies... Uh, or the most most of them get passed through and yeah, I guess I end with showing uh, What happens when you change between the two pole and four pole? So that means post deep the slope is so with a four pole it is darker so like this And then with the two pole it is uh, brighter Like that but not a huge difference so I guess it makes sense to wrap up what we just learned here uh, by comparing what settings we have with this method here to what settings we have with the actual FM4. And uh, you know, so uh, the very left knob is obviously the OBWA setting, but uh, the other knobs here are more interesting, I guess. So the freq knob here, the frequency, it pretty much corresponds to this cutoff knob here on the low pass filter. So yeah, I guess that makes sense. And the Q here, that is a limit with this method because that controls the width that this uh, cutoff knob can move within. And, uh, you know, that, that is determined by our noise source here. And I guess you could find another noise source and connect that to the input here, but it's very convenient to use this noise source here. And I think it sounds quite good, the range. So I guess it isn't a super big deal. And then the speed here, it obviously corresponds to the LFO speed on the 251. And then we have the mode. So, you know, the mode uh, chooses if we use a low pass filter, a band pass filter, or a high pass filter. And luckily, uh, the mode that we want to use is the low pass filter. So, <laughs> uh, then this is obviously perfect for that. And then the mix, obviously, is um, the knob we have here on the low pass filter. Uh, the same thing. And we could also mention that with this method, we have control over parameters that we can control here. For example, the resonance, we can't control that on that thing. And we can't really control the slope that we can with this uh, as well. So yeah, hopefully you learned a lot. And even if you can't apply this directly, maybe you can uh, apply the knowledge that you learned in other contexts than <laughs> getting this OBWA effect. So yeah. Like I said, hopefully it has been interesting and uh, please let me know what you thought about this one and I'll see you in the next one.